Hi guys, if you are new welcome. If you have been here before, hey, make yourself at home, you know where everything is. Today we're looking at 10 of the best vintage comedies you probably haven't heard of. Let's get started. I'll swallow your soul! Come get some. Number 10. Adventures in Babysitting. Chris Parker is a suburban high school senior with a big dream date that gets canceled at the last minute. So she gets stuck with a night of babysitting two kids, Brad and Sarah, Chris thinks it'll be a boring evening of popcorn and cartoons. But of course that does not happen. Chris gets a frantic call from her friend Brenda, who has run away and gotten stuck in a bus station in downtown Chicago. Brenda needs help from her best friend, so Chris decides to take the kids on a late-night rescue mission. What could possibly go wrong, right? I mean, none of them are allowed to go into the city at night without parent. Well, along for the ride comes one of the kids' friend, and let's just say he adds a whole new level of chaos to the mix. The road trip quickly turns into a hilarious misadventure. They get a flat tire, end up in a car being stolen, and even end up at a blues concert with a legendary singer, cue some awesome music. Throughout the night, Chris uses her quick thinking and resourcefulness to keep the kids safe and out of trouble. Adventures in Babysitting is a 80s classic and a must-watch. Number 9. Raising Arizona. This is a Coen Brothers masterpiece. Raising Arizona throws a young Nicolas Cage into the hilarious world of parenthood. Cage plays H.I. McDonough, an ex-con with a knack for staying in trouble. After a string of failed convenience store robberies, H.I. meets his match in Edwina, the police officer who keeps arresting him. They fall in love and get married. The problem is Edwina desperately want a baby, but they can't seem to have one. Feeling really bad. They watch the news and hear about a local furniture tycoon who just became the dad of quintuplets, that's five babies at once. So H.I. plans to steal one of the babies for them to raise as their own. Obvious problems and comedy ensue when H.I. and Edwina become instant parents, facing the challenges of parenthood with a stolen baby in tow. However, their unconventional family is threatened when real dad hires a bounty hunter to get his baby back. With the law hot on their heels and a bounty hunter hot on their heels, H.I. and Edwina must use all their wits, and maybe a little bit of luck, to keep their newfound family safe. Funny and written in the Coen Brothers laid-back style. If you have seen any of these movies, let us know in the comments. If you haven't give us an emoji, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Number 8. Seems Like Old Times. Goldie Hawn is Glenda Parks in this hilarious tangle of old flames and mistaken identities. Hawn plays Glenda Parks, a sharp and sassy defense attorney who's happily married to the ambitious district attorney. Their seemingly perfect life gets turned upside down when Glenda's ex-husband, Nick Gardenia, bursts back into the scene. Nick is a trouble magnet of a writer who stumbles upon a bank robbery and ends up being wrongly accused of the crime. Now a fugitive on the run, he desperately seeks help from the one person he knows can handle a sticky situation, his ex-wife Glenda. Despite the chaos Nick brings with him, Glenda can't help but be drawn back into his goofy charm. The situation gets even more explosive when Ira throws a party for law enforcement officials, right at the same time Nick is hiding out in Glenda's house. Glenda is now caught in a hilarious web of lies. She has to juggle keeping Nick hidden from her suspicious husband all while maintaining her professional image as a lawyer. Of course, things don't go according to plan. Nick's bumbling attempts to stay undercover and Ira's growing suspicions lead to a series of incredibly funny situations. As Glenda tries to navigate this comical mess, sparks fly between her and Nick, making her question her seemingly perfect life with Ira. Number 7. Suicide Kings is a crime flick with a surprising amount of humor. The story centers around a group of wealthy college buddies whose lives get flipped upside down. When one of their sisters gets kidnapped for a hefty ransom, these privileged guys take matters into their own hands. Their crazy plan? To kidnap a retired gangster, the cold and calculating Charlie, played by the awesome Christopher Walken, thinking they can use his underworld connections to get their friend back. Here's where things get messy. These college boys are way out of their league. 
They botched the kidnapping, leaving a trail of hilarious blunders in their wake. Charlie quickly realizes the situation and starts playing these amateurs like puppets. He twists them around his finger, making them suspect each other and revealing their deepest secrets. The situation spirals out of control as the friends face tough choices and double crosses. Number 6. 9 to 5. Girl Power. Get ready for a hilarious workplace comedy with a twist. 9 to 5 tells the story of three fed up office workers, Judy, Violet, and Dora Lee. They're tired of dealing with their sexist, egotistical boss, Franklin Hart, who makes their lives a total nightmare. Judy is a newbie, trying to navigate the office world for the first time after her divorce. Violet is a whiz at her job, but constantly overlooked, because she's a woman. Doralee is the sassy secretary that everyone thinks is sleeping with the boss to get ahead. These ladies are pushed to their boiling point and they decide to take matters into their own hands. In a wild turn of events, they kidnap Mr. Hart and turn the tables on him. They become the boss, well, kind of. Imagine these three running the office. Hilarity ensues as they experience the power they always craved. They whip the office into shape, rewrite the rules, and get some sweet revenge on Mr. Hart in the process. This movie is a classic for a reason. Number 5. The Last Supper. This film follows a group of five grad students, Jude, Pete, Polly, Mark, and Luke. They're all on the liberal side of things, and they're tired of what they see as super conservative views being shoved down their throats. They think to convert anyone who thinks differently. This does not work out as planned. Fuming with frustration, they take action in a way that's both crazy and dark. Their plan? Invite some prominent right-wing folks for a seemingly normal dinner party. But there's a deadly twist. As you can imagine, things don't exactly go according to plan. The movie is full of dark humor and suspense as the students grapple with their wild scheme. Will they go through with it? Will they get caught? The Last Supper is a wild ride that is still appropriate for the times. It will leave you thinking and maybe a little uncomfortable, but it will definitely keep you on the edge of your seat. If you haven't seen it, you should. What are some of your favorite comedies? Number 4. Best Men. Not to be confused with the best man, Best Men is about Jesse, who is tying the knot on the day he is released from prison. Determined to walk down the aisle on time, Hope sends Jesse's four best friends to pick him up from prison and be his groomsmen. Things careen off track faster than a getaway car when Billy, the hot-headed best man, played by Sean Patrick Flannery, decides a bank robbery is the perfect way to score a wedding present of the way to the church. Oops. Now, the groomsmen and Jesse find themselves dodging cops and the feds, all while trying to get to the wedding on time. They end up in the quintessential hostage situation. Hope, ever the resourceful bride, joins the wacky chase, determined to get her happily ever after. Will they make it to the altar? Will they outrun the law? A low-key comedy that is a must-watch. Number 3. Army of Darkness. This movie is the third installment of the Evil Dead series. The first was more horror than comedy. This film throws our hapless hero Ash Williams, played by the awesome Bruce Campbell, into a medieval mess. Ash is back as everyone's favorite chainsaw-armed stock boy. As he is fighting a witch in the middle of the store, don't ask, he gets pulled into a time portal by a magic book he just can't seem to stay away from. Poof. He lands smack dab in the Middle Ages, a time of knights, castles, and of course, deadly demons. Mistaken for some prophesied hero, Ash must use his wits, his boomstick, shotgun, and his trusty chainsaw arm to battle an army of skeletons called deadites. Gross. As if that wasn't enough, Ash needs to find this magic book again, the Necronomicon, and a fancy dagger to get himself back to the 80s. His quest is filled with hilarious blunders, battles with stop-motion monsters, and cheesy special effects that have become part of the movie's charm. In my opinion, definitely the funniest movie of the series and a cult classic. Number 2. Death to Smoochie. Alert, this is not a children's movie. Even though the premise of the movie centers around children's TV shows. This is definitely an adult movie. 
It is about the behavior of the adults and what happens behind the scenes. Death to Smoochie is a dark comedy that follows a hilarious fight between two costumed characters. Rainbow Randolph is the superstar host of a popular kids show, but behind the happy facade, he's a greedy, alcoholic mess. He is caught taking a bribe to allow a rich couple's kid to be part of the show. Enter Sheldon Mopes, a sweet, naive guy with a big dream, to entertain children with his purple rhino persona, Smoochie. Smoochie's show takes off like a rocket, much to the fury of Rainbow Randolph, who's now persona non grata at the TV station. Rainbow, fueled by rage and a thirst for revenge, decides to take Smoochie down. He starts a series of outrageous pranks and schemes aimed at ruining Smoochie's squeaky clean image. Meanwhile, Smoochie, who is oblivious to Rainbow's vendetta, is dealing with his own problems. The network executives pressure him to change his wholesome act for something more edgy. As Rainbow's antics escalate and Smoochie's world crumbles, the line between good and bad starts to blur. Greed, Murder, and Mayhem Wow, you have the makings of a mystery novel, right? This is a twisted comedy, but I really like it for its darkness and portrayal of some really messed up people. One of my favorite comedies. Number 1. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels For anyone who knows Steve Martin and his body of works, you will know that he did comedy for a long time. Most people will say that The Jerk is their favorite Steve Martin film, but this is mine. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels is a delightful comedy caper. Lawrence Jameson is a sophisticated swindler who preys on wealthy women with his impeccable manners and air of refinement in his French Riviera town. Freddie Benson is a small-time hustler with a flashy wardrobe and an outrageous array of cheesy disguises. Freddie stumbles upon Lawrence's turf and tries to muscle in on his lucrative cons. Lawrence, initially annoyed by the brash newcomer, hatches a plan. He proposes a wager, whoever cons a specific amount of money from a young, rich American heiress first gets to stay on the French Riviera, while the loser has to leave town forever. The hilarious competition escalates quickly as Freddy, with his wacky schemes, and Lawrence, with his elegant approach, both vie for the heiress's affection and fortune. Their antics get progressively more absurd, with situations involving mistaken identities, hilarious disguises, and laugh-out-loud cons. The heiress though, is no damsel in distress. She's quick-witted and independent, making her a delightful wild card up until the end of the movie. Definitely funny and a must-watch.